Okay, so short talk. I want to share some of my point of view on how I've been thinking about this in the last year since the last uh, workshop, uh, get some common knowledge, um, and inspire some discussions today. So uh, to set the stage here, the first whole brain emulation roadmap is what I would call bottom up uh, brain emulation. And so the idea here, uh, how many of you have ever written a um, emulator for a computer system by any chance? A couple people. Okay, so you know that like, um, if you're defining the opcodes for a CPU and you get them wrong, then the whole thing catastrophically fails. Uh, you're not going to be able to, say, uh, play a video game. Um, I have a lot of background in Game Boy emulation, actually, myself. Um, and so I often think about in, in terms of that. Um, and old school brain emulation is similar, I would say, that the goal is to solve all of neuroscience so that we understand how everything works and then set up an ion flow simulation. And then you will sort of incidentally, as a result of an advanced physics simulation, happen to compute a mind. Um, if you get any of the details wrong, then probably what happens with that mind, it is either going to have an epileptic fit or it's going to be in a coma, but you're not gonna get a mind out of it. And from the perspective of the physics simulation, it doesn't care. Uh, it's, it's perfectly happy to simulate someone twitching around and doing nothing useful, as it is simulate someone thinking, because they're not really all that different from an ion flow perspective. Um, so a couple of observations. Uh, if we were trying to write a parser for the English language today, using current like computer science tools, um, I would say that we still would not be able to do it. You still can't describe even English simply enough to write something that could take any English sentence and properly parse it and understand it. Um, I wonder how many here agree with that idea. I'm saying not using neural networks, saying just you know writing an old school parser uh, in, a, in a normal programming language. What, what do we think? Yeah, okay, so I find that puzzling. Uh, it, it seems like the knowledge of how to parse English is in some sense itself illegible. Um, I think similar is true for neuroscience. So if we're not doing bottom up, um, then what are we doing? So I think there's an opportunity to apply foundation models at all levels of this, um, of this problem, from connectomics data to even fMRI data to overall behavioral data. And I think at the end of the day, it all converges to the same thing. So uh, let me outline two different ways that I could see whole brain emulation actually working uh, on reasonably short time scales. Uh, and I think the ultimate way to do this most efficiently is to combine them, but uh, here's kind of two pathways. So the first one would be an fMRI only pathway. Uh, so you get a huge amount of fMRI data from a lot of people and you build a video model, a literal actual video model that just says what's the next fMRI frame going to be uh, given a previous resting fMRI frame. Now you might say uh, this seems like it couldn't possibly work, um, but in a vision of where this would work, um, I would say what's happening is GPT, the, the text-based systems, are in some sense already low-resolution uploads of people. And so if you can get something that's approximating human behavior from just text, how much more so could you more closely approximate human behavior by getting the text and a kind of deeper sort of tokens from the fMRI data? Uh, in contrast to a large language model, I would expect something that's based off of fMRI to both be able to output text and to be able to do things like dream or daydream or you know, do a type of memory access uh, as it pauses between thoughts to collect itself. And why might this work? Um, I'd point to the success of systems like GraphCast uh, that's able to predict weather very well. Um, that's in total contrast to the way that it used to be done, right? We used to think, oh, you want to predict weather, we need to simulate a bunch of differential equations, a bunch of fluid flows, and then it'll incidentally compute the weather of a planet. And it turns out that actually just a video model feeding at the last 40 years of weather data is superior to that. So the current best in class weather prediction is all foundation model based. Um, why is this stuff working? I think at the end of the day, it's all converging on the same sorts of algorithms like storytelling. Um, and if you have enough data and you press these models to efficiently predict the next frame uh, for almost anything that's relevant to human behavior, uh, you're going to eventually derive a simple generator for that behavior, which we've evolved to find that algorithm. These things are evolving, whether it's text or fMRI. Uh, it's just a more question of which one gets you there faster. So I used to think that there was like a few specific ways that you get uploading. I don't believe that anymore. I think you need to find the essence of the algorithms that makes people work and all roads lead there, some lead there slower than others. Um, 
it might take a million years of text to get a more and more, and, it, and it's all March of the 9th. So the more stuff you get, the closer you get. Um, it might take a million years of text data. It might take 10,000 years of fMRI data. Um, you know, it might be faster if you include connectomics data, et cetera. Other vision on this is foundation models based on connectomics. So a question I would put forward to you guys is just how far could you really go with just connectomics? Um, and I would say that, boy, you sure seem to be able to go a lot farther than you might be imagining. So um, I've made a foundation model that predicts uh, next frames for EM images. And you know it can do short range uh, extrapolations of how neurons should go. And I think there, there's really a strong analogy between brain tissue and text um, in the sense that text has letters, okay? Very simple rules about which letters follow which other letters. Um, that describes a lot of the data, but not all of it. That's analogous to the idea of continuity in connectomics. And that you can get rather trivially with simple machine learning algorithms or even more complex ones. Um, and moving up this analogy, right, you have sentences which are um, you know, analogous to, to the structures in a brain, right? So uh, if you want to have the stereotypical arrangement of neurons and pathways, that would be like analogous to uh, sentences. And then we have grammar, and grammar would be like the rules of how connections work. So don't connect an excitatory neuron to itself, for example, is one that we've learned just by studying brains, but I would expect a foundation model to become more and more accurate at that. But I would actually expect them to go much deeper than that. If you've, if you've properly built a foundation model out of structure, um, I would expect it to be able to do something like that's analogous to determining whether a, a story has a coherent plot or not. So I would actually expect foundation models just built on structure that have never seen a single bit of dynamicity at all in their lives to still be able to tell whether the memories make sense, the ones that are written there make sense, or whether they're kind of nonsense. The same way that GPT can read a you know, five paragraph story and tell you if it has a plot hole in it or not. Um, I think you could provide two different rap brains um, one of which is a genuine rat brain, and one of which is a synthetic rat brain that, while it has all of the correct grammar, it doesn't make much sense, and you can tell them apart. And so I would wonder, what can't you do if you get really, really good structural prediction um, that's, that, that's relevant here? So those are the things that I think could be fun to talk about. So many questions. Okay. Hi. Uh, thanks for that really interesting talk. Um, I was wondering in the fMRI case, uh, because I don't have this sort of knowledge on the top of my head, it, how many bits of state are there in an fMRI image, let's say, and, and what is the temporal precision in fMRI? So it depends a lot on the field strength, but, um, and there's recently this last year they come up with, I believe, an 11 Tesla field, maybe seven, something like that. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I like to think of it in how many bits you can get per second, and for sensible fMRIs you can get, it's like two megabytes a second or so, um, with a temporal resolution of like a third of a second. How much and, was the temporal, sorry? Uh, a third of a second third temporal a second. resolution to a second, something like that. And so I don't think you can control like a robot gracefully with just an fMRI signal. I think one of the killer things you could use it for is being in conversation with a diffusion image generation model, because you're sort of painting inside your head, like the thing that you're thinking about. Um, and, and I think that that you can extract and you can get images out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Are we familiar with Mind's Eye by any chance? Okay, good, so, yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, so may, uh, it sounds like your foundation model is trained on 2D pictures uh, slicing through uh, the EM pictures. I wonder if one could make an augmentation where you use uh, uh, one or two extra images on top of each other, or maybe for practical purposes, put side to side, so you actually get a bit of derivative, a directionality. Because uh, if I imagine a blob-like object uh, that I'm cutting through, I see an ellipse, now, how, if I want to extend that upwards and downwards, it's very unclear whether that should be a cylinder or whether it should just be a sphere. However, if you get a bit of a curvature of a membrane, I, I, f I expect that it's going to be almost a no-brainer for a, a foundation model to do that. Uh, so you can just give it sequences of images, mm -hmm. right? And it's got a, a context window of multiple ah. previous frames, ah. okay, and so it does that automatically. Sorry, uh, the copy has not kicked in yet. Yes. All right. 
Okay. But it can do it in painting too. Well, we're at time. But okay. feel free to find Aurelia later. Thank you so much. Thank you.